Hello, my name is Victor Oeman, and in this tutorial I will give you a sneak preview of the Megascans Bridge Beta that will be released shortly. Now I'll be recreating this scene you're seeing here, which is a fan art for PUBG. Here we have the Megascans website and the library, which you're probably familiar with. All of its features and functions can also be accessed from the bridge, including several new features that makes working with Megascans assets easier and much faster, such as batch download and batch export to Unity, Unreal, Maya, Max and more. And it runs locally on your Windows, Mac or Linux machine. So let's take a look at a few of the new features now. So first of all, let's log in. This will enable us to do several more things. There we go. So, if we take a look at the top right corner, you'll see a little bell icon. This is where you'll find notifications of news, updates and new additions to the library. To the right of that, you can view and manage your account, and view your points, etc. So, now that we've logged in, we can access two new categories to the left. Acquired and Downloaded. Under Acquired, you can view all assets you've previously downloaded. And under the Downloaded category, you can view the assets that are available on your local machine. But as you might notice, there is nothing there. To fix that, all I need to do is to specify my Megascans download folder by going into Edit and Settings. And there we go, so let's hit Save and view all my downloaded assets. Under Settings, you can also adjust the thumbnail size. Let's go ahead and make them a bit bigger. Alright, so let's go ahead and start searching for some assets I'll be needing. I'll start off by searching for a dried, withered sort of plant. So I'm going into the 3D category and I search for plant. And I think this one looks really good. So if we go into the download settings, I'll just make sure it's set to 4K, JPEG and that all the LODs are checked. So let's download. And you can at any time view the current download status by clicking the download icon in the top right corner of the interface. And there we go, it's downloaded. So let's click the plant tag to remove it, and we'll search for scatter instead. I'm looking for some small rocks I'll be able to scatter in the scene. These ones will do very nicely. Let me just review the download settings real quick. I'll set the preset to Unreal Engine 4, and that's it. Let's hit download. So next up I'll search for some concrete rubble, and I think this one will do really nicely. The download settings are persistent, so you don't need to worry about that. Instead of clicking download, I'll just check this little box in the corner. What this allows me to do is to download several assets at the same time. This is an incredibly handy feature. I'll grab this asset as well, and just as I did with the rubble pile, I'll just check the box in the corner. Or you could control click to select multiple assets. And as you can see, it says two selected, and I'll just hit download. This prompts me with a download settings dialog, allowing me to review the settings before downloading. And you can, just as before, view the download status in the top right corner, or you can view it directly in the grid listing by looking at the blue progress bar under the thumbnail. And once the assets are downloaded, you'll find them in the downloaded category to the left. And here we have them. Not only can you do multiple downloads at a time, but you can also export multiple assets. I'll make sure to check the assets that I want to export, and then I'll hit the export button in the top right corner. I'll just review the settings for the different asset types, and I will set the application to Unreal. This presents me with a little question mark that opens a guide on how to set the link between the bridge and Unreal up. The first thing I need to do is to close down Unreal if it's already running. And there we go. Next up, I'll specify where my Unreal installations are. In my case, they're in the Program Files folder. Next, hit Confirm, select the target engine version, and click Install. And now we're ready for export. So I'm back in Unreal Engine 4, and here you can see the Unreal Engine 4 plugin, which is a link between the bridge and Unreal. While this is running, you can easily send your assets to Unreal. 
If we check out the content browser, you'll see a Megascans directory with the exported assets in folders below it. They all have the correct names, materials and textures assigned. The materials have several parameters such as albedo power, normal intensity, tiling etc exposed so that you can quickly edit and tweak them. These materials are instances referencing a master material which was automatically created upon import. The master material the instances reference depends on the asset type. Foliage assets have a different material and blend materials are another example and the list goes on. So here is a standard opaque master material for example. One great thing about having a few master materials with instances is the performance gain. And another huge advantage is that you can easily make changes to the master materials which will propagate to all its instances. So let's go ahead and place a couple of rubble piles in the scene. I'll speed this part up a bit. Alright, there we go. Let's put some color on the walls. To the left here you'll see a category called custom. Here's where my materials I created in the mixer were exported to. Let's go ahead and put them in Unreal. Alright, so if we go to the folder called surfaces, that's where you'll find them. They all have an individual material created, as you'd expect. But if we look in the root folder for surfaces, you'll see another material. This is a vertex blend material which was created because I had enabled blend materials enabled in the plugin. This allows me to blend between materials in real time by vertex painting. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment to see how it works, but let's start off by putting some materials on the other surfaces first. Ok, let's move on to the fun stuff. I'll just drag drop this material onto the floor. Next, I'll head into the painting mode. I'll select the floor and then I just paint away. This material lets me blend between the clean tiles, wet mud and a broken version of the tiles. Ok, we're getting there. So this is a real simple and fast way to create a more dynamic look to your surfaces. I'm noticing that the rubble piles don't really blend with the floor anymore. So I'll adjust the power of the albedo, but I'll most likely need to add a desaturation node to the master material. And as I mentioned before, all the changes you make to the master material will propagate to all its instances. So I'll be able to use this desaturation node on all assets using this master material. Ok, so let's check out our instance and try the new parameter out. That's looking a lot better. It's worth mentioning that you can replace the default master material that gets assigned to your imports with your own custom one. You can do that in the UE4 plugin window. Next, let's add some scatter assets and foliage. By checking auto populate foliage painter, your imports will automatically be available in the foliage painter tool, ready to go. So let's do it. One thing I also want to mention before we wrap this thing up is that the new bridge enables users and studios to easily add their own exporters for any renderer or proprietary engine. This is really shaping up. Let's wrap this up by baking the lighting and jumping into a cinematic camera. And there we go. Lighting is baked and the frame rate is in the three digit zone. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope you learned something. If you like this video and want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below.